Foundation's Greatest Hits. What do I mean by that? What am I talking about? What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about the very top foundations through the years, how they have performed on my skin personally, what I think of them. We're just going to kind of go through them and talk about their history and we're going to have all kinds of fun talking about foundations today and maybe you'll rediscover some that you had forgotten about in the past that you use that you used to like so let's talk about that and let's have all kinds of fun with foundations greatest hits through the years Some of us have this love-hate relationship with foundation. Some of us love foundation, but we hate the way that it looks on our skin, or we hate the way that it feels, it feels too heavy, or whatever, but we keep looking for that holy grail foundation, right? Well, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. What are the most popular foundations? When did they come out? That kind of thing. And I'm gonna be wearing my glasses probably through this whole entire video. But what I wanna talk about is, I wanna to go to the ones that are the newest, and then we're going to go clear back as far as we can. So the first one that I want to talk about is one that came out in 2018. And it is one of my favorite foundations. And that's kind of what I chose was foundations that I could remember how far back they were and try to remember when they came out. That is the NARS Radiant Foundation. It is the Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. My color is Vienna. And this foundation is a beautiful, like semi-glowy or semi-dewy foundation. So kind of a satin foundation, but it gives wonderful, beautiful coverage and it does give you life to your skin doesn't dry me out by the way i have dry skin i'm 53 i have texture from my skin sagging and i do have wrinkles so that's my skin story and i have a lot of uh, dark spots and um, kind of reddishness that i like to even out with foundation so that's what i look for in a foundation this one checks all those boxes for me now i will tell you that my love before this that came out probably three or four years before this one came out was the all day luminous foundation that they used to have that was my favorite favorite foundation and they discontinued it so this one that came out in 2018 this is one that we can still get but nars company is really a company that has fantastic makeup they just do makeup right i don't always care for the names that they choose as a matter of fact they're quite offensive but they can do a beautiful foundation so in 2018 the radiant uh, the natural radiant longwear that one came out and that is one of my picks now in 2017 is when we have like this explosion of so many foundations so we're going backwards a little bit here so in 2017 the ones that kind of took the drugstore by storm came on the scene and that is the wet and wild photo focus foundations the original was a matte formula which is this one i have the dewy and the matte which i mix together and i love them i have a rose ivory and just a beige ivory i think and so this particular foundation, everybody, first of all, was like, it smells like paint. Well, yeah, that does when sometimes when you put it on. I didn't have a problem with the the smell of it at all. I just loved what this did for my skin. And when it came out in 2017 and everybody was going nuts because this bottle was five bucks and you could get everything that you needed from a foundation. You got long wearing foundation. You got foundation that didn't settle into your fine lines. It made your skin look smooth and pretty and matte skin was all the rage when this came out. But then later on they came out with the dewy because it kind of changed. But Putting these two together on my dry skin is perfection for me. It doesn't settle, it doesn't oxidize, and you can thin it out if you want to and put a very thin layer on, or you can build it up, and you can build up all of these that I'm gonna talk about today. Most of them will give you fairly good coverage at one coat, which this one from Wet n Wild does, but because I have such dark age spots through certain places, I end up putting you know just a little bit of spot placement of it and blending it in to give a little bit of extra coverage. But but that one, everybody just went nuts for it. And especially here on social media. Also in 2017, one of my favorite all time foundations came out. It's the number seven Lift and Illuminate Triple Action Serum Foundation. I have heard that they discontinued this. If they have, I'm gonna cry for a week because this is so beautiful on your skin and it has skin love ingredients in it 
and it has a sunscreen in it. What more could you ask for? This is a borderline dewy foundation, but it looks so natural on your skin. It takes so little to make your skin look perfected. This has been my number one foundation for years and years across the board for me ever since it came out. I just love this foundation. And like I said, if they discontinue it, I'm gonna be so sad because this is one of those ones at the drugstore that is just perfection. It it just looks amazing on almost everybody I've ever recommended it to has never said they didn't like it. Um, and I just, oh, I love this. No oxidation, evens out your skin tone, buildable, medium coverage. It's just, it's a beautiful foundation and I love that one as well. Also in 2017, Bare Minerals Bare Pro came along. And you know, Bare Minerals, the original, the mineral foundation, the powder, that came out, oh gosh, probably like 10 or 15 years before this one even came out. Cause I remember using that one for years when my kids were very little. But this one, I, I don't do powders because of my age. So this doesn't have any powder foundations in it, just so that you know that. But this one right here, the, again, this is that quintessential perfect formula that you can thin out if you want to and you can build it up if you want to if you want more coverage this is a matte foundation this is not got any sort of dewiness in it at all it's very matte so your skin is going to look very matte so if you're an oily gal you might love using this one if you haven't tried it already but this is their performance wear and i just immediately when i found it by the way if you see new bottles it's because my old bottles were so gross that i went out and i purchased new bottles for a lot of these because I, yeah, I had all of these, but the bottles looked so bad. I was like, I don't know if I can hold my head up and show that bottle on camera because it's so gnarly. But yeah, I love this one for the same reasons that I love the other ones. No oxidation, doesn't settle into fine lines. The wear time on this one is phenomenal. This is one of the longest wearing foundations that I own. So, so good. Another one that came out in 2017 that is a fantastic foundation. And I didn't learn about this foundation until probably two or three years ago from Lisa J. And this is the Mac Studio Fix Fluid Foundation. And again, this one does have an SPF of 15 in it. This again is that beautiful coverage. It is a coverage that looks like it just evens out your skin tone, but it doesn't look heavy or cakey on my skin. And again, you can build this up to go over the dark spots, the redness, whatever you may have to really fix whatever problems you have, but it gives such a beautiful canvas very long wearing again. And I've never tried a MAC foundation that didn't work and last a long time or last like all day. I love their foundations. Again, MAC is one of those companies that knows how to do makeup and they do it well. This is a beautiful foundation. It really does remind me of the Bare Minerals Bare Pro. They're very, very similar along with the way that the Wet n Wild. So these are very similar products. I think that they're just some fantastic foundations that just about any woman can wear this foundation. It is just one of those ones that really should be award-winning, probably has won awards before. All right, let's go back. Let's step back. Now we've gone through 2017. Now we've got to go backwards a little bit and into 2016. I believe our next one is. And that is one that I recently have been touting over and over again as one of the forgotten gems at the drugstore. And that is the L'Oreal Pro Infallible Pro Glow. And I have mine in 203, but one of you did say 202 is much better because this one can turn a little bit orange. But I am here to tell you that this foundation is phenomenal. This foundation is one that whether you're oily, I mean, if you're super duper oily, you might not like this, but if you are somebody that even has combo, dry skin, it loves dry skin, and it is so beautiful. We talked about the NARS Radiant. I think that this is very comparable to the NARS, any of the NARS Radiant ones because of how dewy and how, I shouldn't say dewy because this doesn't leave you with a dewy finish. It leaves you more with just a, just a life to your face. It makes your skin look alive. It makes your skin look perfected. And like I said, this one is a little bit orange on me. So that is the one drawback from this foundation. But this was an internet breaker. People were like trying to get their hands on it, trying to figure out, you know, where they could get it sold out. It was like if TikTok had been alive then, this foundation would have broke TikTok. So it's just one of those foundations that you get at the drugstore that is really amazing. And 
I felt like it was one that had been forgotten, thrown in the back of everybody's drawer. And I've been bringing a lot of focus to it because of how beautiful it looks on my mature skin not drying i can wear it all day it looks so good it's just it is that good i love that one now knocking it back to 2015 is the maybelline matte and poreless that's when that came out now did you know that maybelline was established established in 1915 I didn't know that. Basically, Maybelline was established by uh, a brother of this girl called Mabel. And Mabel wanted to look better for a man that she was trying to catch. And so her brother, he decided to step up and he was a chemist and he decided to step up and develop makeup that would make her look better. But anyway, in 2015, the cosmetics industry was taken by storm by Maybelline Fit Matte and Poreless, and this is gorgeous. I know that I said I have dry skin, but it doesn't matter that I have dry skin because this foundation looks amazing on my dry skin. This is one that doesn't look matte. It doesn't look lifeless on your skin. It gives that perfection to your skin without looking heavy and weighted down. It doesn't show up any texture. This never oxidizes on me. This is a beautiful foundation and this is a foundation that people still talk about all the time this isn't one that you know died away and people are forgetting about it and not buying it anymore people continue to repurchase this and repurchase it and normally at my walmart i can find this for about six dollars so this is a high-end foundation in a little bottle at the drugstore and really if you haven't tried this yet you truly are missing out it's fantastic all right, let's step back to 2009. I've got my phone with all kinds of notes on it that I have. Um, in 2009, CoverGirl released their um, team up with Olay for the Simply Age Ageless Foundation Hyaluronic Complex Plus Vitamin C 3-in-1 Foundation. And this is, um, mine is Creamy Natural, 220 Creamy Natural. And I have to tell you that before I started to research this video, I hadn't tried this one. I don't know why, I just hadn't tried it. But again, this has the skin loving ingredients in it from Olay in conjunction with CoverGirl, who really knows how to do makeup. CoverGirl was founded in 1961 and they have been continuing to put out makeup that is superb. Recently, CoverGirl did go cur curlty free. It is one of the very few drugstore makeup lines that you can look at and say that they don't test on animals or anything, which kudos to them. They're amazing. Now I can tell you that when I did try this, I wore it for a week straight and it's gorgeous. It is a lot lighter foundation than I'm used to, but you could definitely tell that it was one of those foundations that you're getting that skin loving benefit from. So you're getting some hydration. You're getting a little bit of the satin look, a little bit of the glowy look as you're wearing this. And it covers very, very well. I would say this is a medium buildable coverage, but what I find really interesting about this foundation, and I'm going to grab my glasses right here because um, in 2009 when this hit the market it was the number one makeup for four months in a row across the world not just in the United States everywhere around the world they were buying CoverGirl and Olay's Simply Ages, Ageless Foundation. Where was I? I have no idea. 2009 must have been a bad year for me. But this is one of those foundations that is timeless. So many people still buy this. It's probably a hidden gem in your drawer. Pull it out and start using it again. I think that you'll love it again. All right, we're getting down to these that have, are really, you know, going way, way back. All right, let's look at the next one. So the next one is the beloved Estee Lauder Double Wear. This was released in 1990. 97 and Estee Lauder got her start in 1946 and she started selling skincare and makeup in beauty salons and by demonstrating her product on women. In 1946, she and Joseph Lauder officially launched the, co launched the company and a year later they got their first major order, $800 worth of products from Saks Fifth Avenue. I love that story because now can you imagine how many women around the world wear Estee Lauder. It is on every single department store counter. It is in Sephora and Ulta and Saks and uh, Macy's, you name it, it's there, Nordstrom, you name it. It is a beautiful full coverage foundation. This is a foundation that if you don't like full coverage, if you don't like heavier foundations, you might not like this, but the results of this foundation and how long this lasts and how good it looks on so many women is impressive. And this has been a staple in countless women's 
arsenal of makeup for as far back as I can remember. When I came onto the scene six years ago, it was Estee Lauder everywhere. Everybody loved this foundation. And it is still fairly pricey, but it is well worth it. A little bit goes a long ways. It covers so well. It is a beautiful foundation. It is quite a matte foundation. If you sheer it out a little bit, maybe with a primer or with a moisturizer, you can get a little bit lighter coverage. But gorgeous foundation. The only thing that I would say about this foundation is at this price point, why can't they get a pump in there? We just got to admit that, uh, you know, Estee Lauder could afford a pump for as much as they're spending on this, especially when you look at something like Olay that, you know, hello, that doesn't have, that has a pump and, you know, it's at the drugstore. So we definitely could afford a pump. You can buy them on the internet. You can buy them on Estee Lauder's website, but it's extra, which I think is silly. But this is an amazing foundation and so many women love it. So many women have tried it and it continues to be at a number one seller for a very, very long time. All right. Have you been able to guess what the number one foundation was or what, not necessarily the number one of all of these, but what the oldest foundation that we have around, have you been able to guess that yet? I sure couldn't when I did it. It was really hard for me to try and figure out. And I had so much fun with this, this whole entire project. So Revlon Color Stay, and this I have right here is the normal to dry formula. They do have the oily formula, normal to oily formula. Revlon Color Stay came out somewhere. I couldn't really pin this down. It came out somewhere between 1990 and 1996. The whole entire Color Stay line was launched in 1990. So I don't know how much longer after that that the Color Stay Foundation came out, but I know that it came out before Estee Lauder. And I'm telling you something right now. For me, I have shown this on my channel as a dupe for Estee Lauder because it acts so much like it. I have mine in 200 nude in the winter time when I'm not self tanning. It's a perfect color for me. And again, no oxidation. Doesn't it settle into fine lines or accentuate texture. It goes on so smoothly and it just perfects your canvas and makes your face look flawless. Now, a lot of these, that's what they were looking for back in the day. Now we have a lot of tinted moisturizers. We have a lot of very lightweight foundations now, but back in the day, these are what were looked for, especially in the nineties. That's what everybody wanted was that matte look. However, I do find that this normal to dry formula from Revlon, this one works so good for me uh, and it doesn't make me look super matte either. It doesn't make me look dewy, but I don't feel like I don't have any life to my skin. So let me just tell you really quick how cool this is for us to talk about Revlon just a little bit. Revlon was established in 1932 in the middle of the Great Depression and it was established by two, two Jewish American brothers, Charles Revit, Re Revson and Joseph Revson, along with a chem chemist, Charles Lackman, who contributed the L to the Revlon name. They started with a single product, a new type of nail enamel or polish, and they pulled all their resources and they went to the matte manufacturing process and the rest is history. And so now we have these huge companies, these amazing companies that are bringing us makeup all the time. And now the makeup industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. And all of these these people, these young people got on board and saw a need or a niche where they could fill it with something that they felt like they could really excel at and they have. And every one of these foundations I love personally. They're so good. Um, I can't look at one of them and go, I don't like that for any reason at all. So if there's one in here that you saw that kind of intrigued you and you haven't tried before, go ahead and pick it up and give it a try. I bet because it's been around for such a long time that you will love it. These are tried and true foundations. And you know, as well as I do, that if something doesn't work in a cosmetics industry, the, the fans are not gonna buy it and that company's gonna discontinue it really quickly, which is why I can't figure out what number seven is doing because I know that the fan base for that is huge. By the way, I will tell you that I have tried the new one from number seven and I don't like it at all. It makes my skin look patchy. It is supposed to be formulated for a mature woman and if it is, it doesn't work for this mature woman. It is very patchy and it does not wear well on my skin. So please, number seven, if you're listening, please, please do not get rid of that. You're making a huge mistake, but yeah, they're not gonna hear that, but 
Let's hope. All right, everybody, I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you did enjoy the step back through history. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did. And if you are new to my channel, help me get to 100,000, please. I am just working so hard to get to 100,000 subscribers. That is my goal for this year. Hopefully the first of the year I will get there. I'm just really excited to be doing this and to be kind of getting my second wind about my channel, even though I've been on here a long time. So help me out and subscribe. And I would appreciate that more than you know. Wherever you are in the world, just know that you have a friend that is in Utah and she sits and tests out makeup and loves make it, makeup as much as you do and wouldn't have it any other way than to sit down and visit with you as often as I can. So let's all meet back here in my next video and let's have all kinds of fun together. Please take care of yourselves. Love you so very much. Goodbye, my friends.